Hello happy souls, welcome back to my channel. This is Charlotte with Happy Twins 1111. Oh my beautiful friends, I'm sorry I've been away for a while. Just been finding my feet. I'm gonna miss this lockdown fiasco and four kids at home, it's just a bit hectic. But here I am, I've got a fabulous reading for you today. I'm gonna to ask, what does spirit need you to know about your love life? Who knows what's gonna come through? Whatever spirit needs you to know in love. And I've got three paths for you, but before we look at those, I just want to thank these lovely people for sending me some tarot cards. I've received so many recently. These three all came together, and these were from uh, um, Ron Beardsley. Oh, actually, I think it was Mandy. She must have ordered it under Ron's account. She says, your readings and guidance help so many on their true soul's journey. Thank you, Charlotte, for your readings and the group. And thank you, Mandy. I really, really appreciate these. They're so lovely. We're using this one. The Labyrinth Tarot in part two today. So, and um, we're using the postcards as well from Spirit in this reading too. So thank you so much. I appreciate those. And I've also got this one. This is a gift from White Rose Guidance. If you haven't checked out her channel, please do. She's absolutely amazing. And I really appreciate these. Thank you so much, my love. This is the Healing Light Lenormand. And, and we're also using these in today's reading. And then I received these ones from Rachel. She just says, enjoy. Thank you so much, Rachel. This is Jane Austen deck. I've been looking um, to get this for ages. I've been waiting for it to be released. It's not actually a traditional tarot deck. It's only got 53 cards. Um, but I'm just getting the hang of it. It's a bit different. But thank you so much. I love that. So thank you, guys. I do love it when you send me decks. If you would like to donate a deck, just to show your appreciation for the videos I create, you can find an Amazon wish list in the description box below. And I really, really do appreciate receiving these from you guys. It helps keep my readings fresh. And um, when you read tarot cards, getting a new deck is a bit like getting a new book. It's like reading a different author's interpretation. So it's just lovely. I absolutely love it. Okay. Let's do this. I'm going to bring the paths forward so you can see them a bit better. Timestamps are in the description box below. I usually choose from the timestamps, but um, some people are drawn to the crystals or just feel drawn to a specific pile. You may be drawn to more than one, and that's okay. It just means there's messages in more than one pile for you. First pile, we've got the Frida Kahlo Tarot with Amethyst. Second pile, we've got um, this is the Labyrinth Tarot. Um, with Kambaba Jasper and then we've got the Nicoletta Ciccoli Tarot with Selenite. This was a gift from Alexandra, one of my lovely students. So take your time choosing one, choose from the time stamps, from the crystal, whatever works for you. Don't forget to make a note in the comments of which pile you watch. All my readings are timeless. So check out the playlist, you can watch that any time. If you've got a question, there's always going to be a pile that works for you and by making a note in the comments you know which one you've watched already. Okay, so I'm going to move piles two and three out of the way. And we're going to start with pile one, which is the Frida Kahlo Tarot with Amethyst. So welcome, pile one. Thank you for joining me again. I hope you're keeping safe and well during the lockdown. Whew, right, what does spirit want you to know, pile one? What do they need you to know in love? see what comes through for you. I don't work with reversals in this deck because as you can see the backs aren't reversible. If they come up reverse I will turn them the right way up. Okay. What does spirit want you to know? What's the messages about your love life from spirit? We've got death. Page of Cups, Judgment, the Nine of Wands, the Page of Wands, the Ten of Swords, the Six of Wands, and the Ace of Swords. I'm going to get some Oracle cards for you as well. This is the Divine Feminine and Masculine Reunited Oracle Deck. We've got Unconditional Love and God of Unity, Yeshua. And from the Energy Oracle, we've got Magician and the Mirror. And seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel. So that's the crown chakra. We're going to get some of these postcards from Spirit. 
I'll read that to you in a bit. And from this um, beautiful Lenamon deck, Healing Light Lenamon, that was a gift from White Rose Gardens. You can find a link to her channel in the description box below. We've got number 23, the Seven of Clubs, and number one, the Nine of Hearts. And finally, I'm going to use some of these cards. These are by Made for Love. If you haven't checked out her channel, please do. You can find it in the description box below. These are the Divine Counterparts and Separation Deck. I may get some Oracle cards as we go. We are going to do an extended reading today as well. So if this reading resonates for you, there will be an extended for you to watch. So we've got Running Away, Moving on to Karma Waters, and I know that this is a soul connection. Okay, let me just check these are all in shot. Yes, they are beautiful. Okay, part one, what does spirit need you to know about love? First card out was the death card. Now, this is the card of transformation, endings, new beginnings. And I'm feeling really strongly that you've been dealing with someone probably much younger than you that has been kind of messing you around a bit. It feels like there's been a lot of games here, a lot of very immature energy, and that this person just hasn't been meeting you halfway. They haven't been prepared to demonstrate commitment, to demonstrate feelings. They're just really, really holding back. And I feel like both of you are actually, um, you know, perhaps quite early on in um, your journey together. Now, it does say here that I know this is a soul connection. I do feel very strongly that you, you know, this is a kind of deeper than normal connection for you guys. We have got the running away card down here as well. And I feel like this is kind of what's happening between you two. But it feels like you're in a good place with it, the viewer. You know, this person just wasn't meeting you halfway. And even though it's been very painful, it was more painful to kind of continue as you were. And I feel like you've just kind of pulled back. And, you know, you're, this is a number eight as well. So it doesn't feel like a permanent running away. It feels like a taking a break kind of energy, giving your person space to grow and kind of taking space back for yourself to do the same. Because with the Ten of Swords here, you know, it was just bringing you so much pain. We've got the Page of Cups there, and this pertains to messages. And I feel like this person was very sexually motivated. You know, they were very fun, very flirty. But you know, the fact that it wasn't being moved to the next level was causing you to just feel so uncomfortable and rejected. We've got the judgment card here clarified by the six of wands and spirit wants you to know that you're doing so well in terms of your healing journey and the progress you're making as an individual. It feels like you're finally triumphant in answering that soul's call. It's probably something you've been working at for a long time and we have got that seventh chakra um, Archangel Uriel here and also the magician in the mirror you know it really feels like you've had some kind of breakthrough with your spiritual development and that you're now moving on to karma waters as a result of this so this is really positive there's also the energy of endurance here the energy of endurance and stamina and spirit is asking you to hold tight to hold on to the truth to keep hold of your faith you know that this is a soul connection but i feel like that in the 3d there isn't a great deal of evidence to support that knowing at the moment and so it does require a huge amount of endurance and strength and faith so that you can keep going and i'm feeling that you've got a lot of people around you that are counseling you against this person you know they're explaining to you with the, their knowledge of the 3d relationship paradigm why this could never work and why you need to step away. And whilst I think it was good advice, sort of, in that you probably do need to step away, I feel like you already have, you know, you've kind of closed out that cycle, but actually, you know, it, it, this is a soul connection and there is deeper meaning in this connection. There are lessons that still need to be processed, resolved and learned. We have got unconditional love and Yeshua, the God of unity. Now, this for me is spirit saying that you really need to focus on coming into union with self. And it's about reparenting yourself as well. Here with unconditional love, you can see there's two, two women here holding babies. And for me, this is really about reparenting yourself. It's not how I normally see that card, but I'm getting this coming through very strong for you today. That you, This is where your healing next needs to take place. It's on those inner child wounds. They're the wounds that still keep you stuck and codependent because in reality, if you weren't still in that energy, you wouldn't be feeling this pain. 
You know, you'd be able to accept your person more unconditionally, you know, without having those same expectations. But that's hurting you and it's okay. There's no shame in it. This is the same battle we all face in overriding that anxious attachment and that need for someone to reciprocate and to kind of deliver on our needs and expectations. But you're learning how to rise above that. You're learning to recognize um, this pain as um, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to see where you need to heal. I do feel like spirit is really cheering you on right now. It feels like you've broke through a barrier as far as your connection to spirit is concerned. And with this crown chakra being a number five card as well, you know, I feel like these are such transformative energies. Also remember we have that death card, which is about you know as the things coming to an end so that that new beginning can can start and I do feel very strongly that it was probably you that's run away um you know it's you that said no it's you that's put your foot down and said this isn't enough for me you know I deserve more I'm worthy of more and um you know you you need to sort of do your own thing and let me know when you're ready to rise up to meet me kind of energy coming through here this is also clarified by the nine of cups which is the card of self-fulfillment, emotional self-fulfillment. It's also about wish fulfillment. You know, this is about having everything you need and want to be emotionally balanced and stable. And we've got the seven of wands here. Now, it's depicted by three mice in this card, which are a very fragile but very um, industrious energy. This is also a number five card, even though it's the seven of clubs, which is wands energy. But um, five, again, it, you know, th this is very transformative energies you're moving through. I do feel like with there being three mice here, there's a need for you to collaborate. Spirit, spirit is asking you to reach out into the community, you know, this community that you, the spiritual community you're already part of, and to start really building um, solid relationships and friendships there that are going to help you move forward, especially with your spiritual work. I want to read this, um, this card for you. So it says, Dearest you, since you're on earth, you understand how buildings are built, yes? A good solid foundation and yet flexibility too, in case of earthquakes. Truth be told, you can't offer something sustainable unless it is built from a solid base, whether it be an idea that takes from one step at a time or an actual house that needs a sturdy foundation dug, poured and built. We want to remind you of this because you might need a little encouragement to see this is true in your life at this time. Celebrate the fact that right now you can repair the cracks in the foundation of your life effortlessly, as well as do a general site check to ensure your hard work is being well supported. Do this and know that you are building your life on a perfect and solid foundation and that that will allow you to welcome the many miracles waiting to come and visit. We're so happy for you and so intrigued by what you're building. So that's really beautiful. That really, really affirms, you know, what's happening here. You've made this breakthrough with this judgment card. You're finally feeling triumphant, like you've risen above the pain enough to really start charging forward. And as I said, there's so much stamina, strength and faith here, like you're ready now to fully embody that truth, to accept what this connection is, to accept the lessons that are being presented to you. But as I said, right now, your journey is an independent one. These are both number card, one cards, unconditional love and God of unity. This is about coming into union with yourself and recognizing that you know you can't be in union with this person until you've found that love within yourself anyway. You can't give someone that which you don't already have. And this person simply is not equipped to be able to offer you the kind of long-lasting commitment that you're looking for right now. And the only commitment you read right now is the commitment to yourself, that unconditional love for yourself. But as I said, there is a message here that um, you need to reach out into your community. There's some really valuable for support there and some very special um, soul group connections that are really going to help you move forward and empower you. It feels like you've been a bit defensive about that. You're not good at being vulnerable with people. And this is something you need to learn in those friendship groups so you can take that learning into this connection. It's learning how to be vulnerable. Um, and I feel like this is something you've struggled with. Once you've learned how to look after your own emotional base, you're going to find that a lot easier. We're just going to get a few of these cards from White Rose Guidance as well. 
And these are the divine love messages. I just want to get a few messages from your person. And then we're going to take this over to the extended. I'm going to look at, take a deeper look at what's happening in the connection and get some um, guidance on what this person's intentions are, kind of what's going on there and what you need to know moving forward. All right, so let's see. Whoa. There's too many. Let's give them a shuffle again. But yeah, I feel like Spirit, above all else, wants you to know that they're so proud of you. This is such a breakthrough time for you. You're doing so well. You're building a solid foundation uh, upon which everything else now is just going to you know, be more stable, more balanced, more harmonious. And we've got here, my love for you goes so deep. You are the song of my heart. I'm so sorry for not giving you the time and attention that you deserve. I will do anything to bring you happiness. I worship your perfection. You are a diamond of immense strength and beauty. I'm going to get some charms as well. So we've got save yourself. We've got the two knives. We've got no idea. The crown. And don't give up. So my love for you goes so deep. I'm hearing this really is the truth, but this person is very afraid to go deep. They're very afraid to really allow themselves to connect with those emotional depths. And that means it's very hard for them to express it to you. And I really feel like you needed to hear this today because it feels like certainly in the 3D experience, you just don't get this affirmation. You really don't know how this person feels because they're just unable to reach into their emotional depths and bring forward those expressions of love, but they do feel it. I will do anything to bring you happiness. I feel really strongly that this person really daydreams and fantasizes about the kind of love you could have, but they just feel so unworthy and so incapable of delivering on that right now. There's something blocking them. We'll take a deeper look at that in the extended, but I really do feel... It's a case if they can't rather than they won't right now. And of course, the way the energies are lying, this separation right now serves you, which is why you took that action to step away. You know, you knew that both of you needed that space, you know, to be in karma waters. You are the song of my heart. And I'm feeling really strongly that there are songs that this person listens to over and over again that really reminds them of you. They really connect with you through music. And my guides are saying as well that when you tune into the radio, you can tune into those same songs. You know, that spirit is always trying to help you connect um, through music so that they can kind of help you understand what's happening. It may be that because you're so early in your spiritual journey, you don't trust the messages that are coming through your higher self. You're struggling to read your own cards. But music is something that's so tangible. You know, when you switch on the radio, you can trust that you're going to hear the right words to support your journey and to support the answers you're looking for. I worship your perfection and I'm hearing that this card is this double-edged sword. This is what makes them so indecisive because they really have put you on a pedestal. You know, they don't see how they can match up to, to the, the level of perfection as they perceive it that you reside in. And this person really does feel like they have to change so much before they can really commit to this relationship. They don't feel like they have enough to offer. Um, it could be that there are, you know, cultural or class differences between you that really triggers this person's self-worth issues, makes them feel very insecure. I'm so sorry for not, for not giving you the time and attention you deserve. And I really get such a lot of shame attached to this and also a lot of sincerity. You know, this person... I feel like that they're almost being cruel to be kind. They feel like they have to hold back because they don't want to disappoint you. And they see how excited you get when communication picks up pace and it becomes more regular. And they find themselves selfish for kind of engaging with you that way because it feels like they're just leading you up the garden path. You know, they're giving you a false sense of security. Um, I'm hearing also that this person has tried to be friends with you, but in practice that just doesn't work. Um, and that both of you, you know, struggle to switch your feelings off and stay in that platonic energy, which again, I feel is why you've had to pull back. This person feels very passionate, as I said, very flirty, very fun, very sexual, but they just don't know how to, to release the emotion that's within them. You're a diamond of immense strength and beauty. Again, this person really puts you on a pedestal. 
you know, they really do see your light. They see you as someone so, so beautiful, so special. They just don't see how they can ever match up to that. You know, they're kind of hoping they're a diamond in the rough that with a bit of spit and polish, they can get themselves worthy for you. But I'm hearing that that doubt, that insecurity really eats away at them. Now, from the charms, we've got don't give up. You know, trust that this is moving in the right direction. The clouds are going to part. Everything is going to be okay. You're going to receive that clarity. Now, the rainbow really is a symbol of hope. It's a beautiful symbol. It's optimism, wish fulfillment. You've got to trust that good things are on the horizon, that things are going to work out for you. And I'm hearing that this is particularly important for you because you've felt so up and down recently. But as I said, it feels like you've turned a corner. You know, with that nine of wands card, there's endurance and stamina here now. There's faith. And spirit just wants you to know that everything is going to become clear really soon. So, lo so long as you stay on the right track, stay committed to the journey. And you need to recognize your own divinity and your connection to source. We've got the crown chakra card out there for you as well. You know, right now you have a clear and open channel. You can trust the messages that spirit is sharing with you. You really need to spend more time in meditation, listening to those, and just listen to where you feel it in your body. You know, ask spirit to show you what a yes and a no sounds like or feels like in your body. So you can really start to open up to receive those messages that are being brought to you. We've also got this no idea, and I'm hearing this as your person. You know, they really don't have the same spiritual um, spiritual awareness as you do right now. They don't understand what this connection is. They don't necessarily understand the magnetic pull for you, and they don't understand how to make it work. They only know that they miss you and they want you, but they also feel very strongly that they can't be with you now. They just know it's not the right time. Um, so you're just going to have to be really patient with them. You know, and trust that their light right now isn't at full beam. It's not shining like yours. And it's really difficult for them to, to embody this same faith and sense of knowing that you do. And they are so indecisive. It's not easy for them to stay away from you. You know, on the one hand, they really want you. On the one hand, they miss you terribly. And there's a tremendous amount of passion and desire there. But on the other hand, they know that they can't give you what they want. They feel like they can't live up to whatever your expectations are or their expectations of what a relationship should look like. So they really are feeling very torn. And we've got save yourself. And again, you know, this really goes back to what I was saying about this unconditional love of self. You know, this is really about looking after yourself, learning to be emotionally balanced in your own energy, learning to, to fulfill yourself emotionally so that you don't rely on the energy of others and certainly the energy of this person. That's what this journey is really about for you. It's about learning to love yourself, learning to heal yourself, learning that the only person that can truly make you happy is you. So I really hope that's helped, Paul. Well, we're going to take this over to the extended read. We're going to take a deeper look at how your person is thinking and feeling in this connection and what spirit needs you to know about that and how you can move forward for your highest good and that of your person. So if this resonated for you, please join me over there. If not, do hit the like button. It really helps my channel to grow and I appreciate it so much. Even if you hit the down button, that helps my channel grow too. So if you didn't like it, you can give me a down thumb too. I don't mind. So I'll see you next time. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. Lots of love and thank you so much. Bye. Hello, part two. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's do this. What does spirit need you to know about your love life right now, part two? What messages need to be brought forward? Let's see what's going on. See what's happening for you. I'm not offering private readings at the moment, by the way. But if you would like a private reading or if you're after a twin flame connection check, I do recommend Made for Love, my girl. You can find a link to her channel in the description box below. She does twin flame checks in the same way I do. You can also get them from Divine Pisces 222. I'll put a link to her, um, her channel in the description box below as well. She's one of my very, very highly esteemed students and she'll be able to do a twin connection check for you. Um, there's quite a few of my students that you can find in the Happy Souls networking group. It's a Facebook group. You can find it also in the description box below, but you might find students who can do that in there as well. Um, they, obviously, all my students use the same method 
that I use. But I've been getting a ton of emails asking about private readings. I don't know when I'll open them up again. But if you do need support in the meantime, I recommend Made for Love or one of my fabulous students. Um, I don't think White Rose Gardens is doing readings at the moment either. Quite a few of us are having a break. Because um, we've got to take care of ourselves as well, you know. Sometimes it's you've just got to turn all that focus inwards for a while. Okay, part two. What does spirit want you to know about your love life? We have got the two of pentacles. The seven of wands in reverse. The sun in reverse. Judgment in reverse. Justice. The Empress in reverse. The Four of Cups. The Page of Cups in reverse. I beg your pardon. All right, let's get some Oracle cards as well. This is the Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine Reunited deck. We've got God of Wisdom, Thoth, number four. Codependency, number one. And from the Energy Oracle, Door to Personal ha Healing and Happiness, and Contract, number six. I'm going to use these Healing Light Lenormand cards as well. These were a gift from White Rose Guidance. You can find a link to her channel down below. We've got number 24 or the Knight of Cups, Jack of Hearts. Ace of Clubs, number 25, which is also the Ace of Wands. I'm going to get a postcard from Spirit for you. These have got quite a lot of writing on, but we'll read it. I'll read it all to you in a moment. And finally, from the Divine Counterparts and Separation deck. These are by Made for Love. They're absolutely fab. You can buy them on her website. We've got The Spy. We've got Hope. We've got Synchronicities. Okay, let me just check they're all in shot. Yes, perfect. Okay. So part two, I am really picking up a tremendous amount of change and shifts in your um, zone of awareness at the moment. But I do feel like you are, you know, you are still wrapped up in a karmic cycle and that your person is as well. And I'm hearing this is why your love life is not progressing. There probably is someone that you're interested in. But I feel like the universe is deliberately keeping you apart right now because there are other things that you both need to work on independent of one another and I'm hearing this has been very painful for you um, there's a lot of obsessive energy here and I can't tell which side of the fence it's coming from but I feel it may be both of you um, definitely one of you is that you know we've got this codependent energy one of you feels very painfully attached you know as I said this is very obsessive very addictive energy we've got the spy card down here that definitely refers to both of you I think you're both you know, keeping tabs on one another on social media. It just feels like there's a lot of pain here right now. Um, a lot of really uncomfortable feelings. And as I said, with the two of pentacles clarified by justice, it just feels like there are a lot of karmic cycles that are shifting and moving. And this is also creating a lot of confusion for each of you because you don't know whether you're coming or going. It's just really um, confusing energies, really confusing energies. And I feel like, you you know, definitely for you, the viewer, if you resonate with divine feminine energy, I do feel like you are in distorted feminine energy right now. So that means you're expressing all of those distorted behaviors that are, you know, um, I mean, we've already got codependency, obsession, um, people pleasing, giving more than you're receiving. Um, it just feels like you're not, honoring yourself you're not honoring your own needs you're, you're giving out so much love in the hope of getting something in return and then feeling so deflated and so sad when your love isn't returned 
I do feel like there may be some mental health issues here as well. We've got the sun in reverse, which for me can can mean a lack of joy. You know, this is a very apathetic energy. This is someone that can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And spirit is asking you to just trust that this period of solitude is really um, serving you. You know, with this four of cups energy here clarifying you this, this is actually what the doctor ordered. You know, you need to get comfortable in your own company. You need to learn how to be alone and you need to learn how to be happy alone before you can be happy with someone else. Spirit would also like you to open up to spirit. Um, you know, it feels like you've been very avoidant of the spiritual um, the spiritual signs that are being presented to you. Um, and we have got this here, the door to healing and happiness. And it's clarified by contract, which is also, um, you know, very similar to the justice card. Um, if you see, I'm going to bring these cards closer so you can actually see them. But, you know, the justice card features this person with the scales and they're wearing the blindfold. And you can see this card is very much inspired by the energy. You know, they're, they're, they're not looking with their 3D eyes. They're feeling their way into it. They're looking for balance and clarity. But the justice card and this card is indeed called contracts. This is also number six, the number of unconditional love. You know, it does suggest that there is a soul contract between you and this person. But it feels like a contract about personal healing and happiness. You know, it's opening the door to spirit for you. And you're probably receiving all of those synchronicities. You know, it, it, it probably is a case that you you recognize there is something deep here and you're magnetized to this person. But you really do need to um, bring your own karmic learning into balance. And it does feel like with that judgment card in reverse that right now you are avoiding that soul's call. You are avoiding the spiritual development. You are avoiding that investment in yourself it feels like you're very focused on this other person in a very obsessive and overwhelming way. And, and so the universe is deliberately keeping you apart. It's keeping you apart and saying, listen, you know, each of you has got work to do together, but a, a big part of this is about filing, finding your own personal healing and your own personal happiness, learning not to rely on someone else to fill up your love tank. Because that's codependency, that's unhealthy, attached love. It doesn't serve you. It's about bringing things back into balance. And we have got this ace of wands here and it's represented by a ring or commitment. Now, for me, the ace of wands is about grasping the wand and moving forward. You know, embracing spirit and beginning that journey. And I feel like this one, this ace of wands kind of represents the same. Your spirit is asking for your commitment. It's asking you to recognize that when you start taking care of yourself, when you begin loving yourself, you are opening those doors to that personal healing and happiness, which of course, you know, happiness includes love. But right now that your commitment needs to be to yourself. We've got the, the, the page of cups or knight of cups here, and this is all about loving messages. It's also 24, which reduces to six. And I do feel like a big part of this is that you're not able to be vulnerable. I'm hearing that this person has no idea how you feel about them. You probably watch them from a distance. You know, again, we've got this social media spy card. It feels like you kind of hang back and they're, they're, they're not really clear on how you feel. But I do genuinely feel that this person has very similar um, energy. You know, they also look at you from a distance and they really don't know what to say to you. Um, so there is hope here. And I do think this other person notices those synchronicities as well. But each of you has hope in your heart. You, you know, this relationship can be different, but we've got God of wisdom here. You know, you're, you're being asked to recognize that there is a higher power involved and that you can tap into that universal flow of wisdom when you open yourself up to the spiritual journey, which is what you're really being guided to do. Now, this card is quite lovely. It says, dearest you, do you ever wonder whether your ideas and inspiration might be coming through your soul rather than generated from your mind alone? We are here to tell you we are always whispering in your ear about your highest good. We are conduits for spirit, letting you know you are a living channel for this awesome co-creative energy. When you're feeling inspired, it means you heard us. Inspiration means spirit is breathing through you. 
Inspiration needs your human passion to keep it going so you can make a difference in the world. So keep moving on what inspires you. Let yourself be led into new experiences and know that this is why you are on the earth. Your purpose is to discover your spiritual nature and to bring forth through your efforts whatever is meant to be. Wondrous miracles have a way of showing up when you let inspiration propel you forward. And again, you know, this card really stands out for me. The door to personal healing and happiness, you know, it's there for you. It feels like it's open and you're just being asked to step through it. But that, you know, this is something that exists within you. And it feels like you've been looking it out, so you've been looking for it outside of yourself your whole life. And spirit's not now saying, you know, come inside. Let us show you how, how happy you can be. Let us show you how healed you can be. But for sure there is some karmic, karmic stuff here that has to be resolved. Whatever is changing right now in your connection or in your life, you need to lovingly accept it and allow it to be because it serves you. You know, everything is as it's meant to be. You need to release impatience, release frustration, release resentment and trust that you are on the right path. Um, but you do also have to take responsibility for yourself and your, royal well, your own well-being and how you feel about yourself and recognize that how you feel about yourself is the biggest block for love right now. And your person wants you to know, they may never be able to say it, but they do love you. They feel this too. They do believe you are worth fighting for. And as I said, I feel like there's a lot of karma surrounding both of you. I feel like both of you may have karmic partners or be involved in situations which keep you apart right now. And this person feels very strongly. I mean, just look at these cards. This is the White Rose Guidance Divine Messages deck, by the way. You can buy them from her website. I'll put a link in the description box below. I can never say it, but I do, do love you. You are worth fighting for. I constantly feel you running through my veins. I can see eternity in your eyes. You're a diamond of immense strength and beauty what I would give to run my fingers through your hair. And I feel very strongly that you and this person have perhaps never moved your connection to the next level. You might neither have ever been friends or been on a date. You're kind of admiring one another from afar via social media, you know, and I feel like your circumstances as much as your attitude to life is what's keeping you apart at the moment. But you need to be reassured that this person feels you. They sense this connection. They want you as much as you want them. They're seeing all of this blood, um, beautiful and joyful energy as well. Let's get some charms for you. Okay. So, babe with the power. And I feel like spirit is saying, just remember how powerful you are. You know, you need to tap into your intuition. You need to remember the truth of who you are. This is where you're going to find peace. That is where you're going to find access to that door to personal healing and happiness. It's through your own power. You need to understand your own divinity and how powerful it is. Everything will be all right. You've got to trust. And blue is the color of truth. It's also the color of expression of truth. Um, for some of you, there's a message here about recognizing that sometimes change comes from that place of integrity and honesty, that when we're able to um, demonstrate and communicate, communicate our needs in an authentic way, that's when we're most likely to move forward for our highest good, because that's when we're heard, because it's coming from a place of truth. So there is a message here as well, that in order to kind of move things in a more tangible and productive direction, you have to learn to communicate in a really authentic way. And I'm hearing this isn't just in romantic relationships. This is in all of your relationships, in particular as far as your, your practical and work life is concerned. Keep going, keep growing. You know, you're going to come into full bloom. It's going to happen, but you've got to take responsibility for your own growth and you have to keep going. I feel like you go through phases of thinking, you know, I need to better myself. I need to feel better about my life. You might start working out or try meditation or try a new healing modality. But I'm hearing that you don't stick with these things, that you give up, you know, before anything really has time to sort of take effect. It's a case of you're kind of convincing yourself that things aren't going to work before you've really got started and you know that the spirit guidance here is to really keep going 
just keep swimming above all else you know trust that you're always moving in the right direction this one living in perpetual sin now this came up in part one in the extended reading and I quite rightly pointed out that even though those words are surrounded by dark or black you know this is a white rose it's a symbol of innocence and purity and new beginnings and I want you to remember that you can have that any time. You do hold yourself really responsible for the mistakes you've made, the things that you've said. You know, I'm hearing a lot of should have, could have kind of energy, a lot of regret and remorse, and you need to let that go. The, the, the sinful feelings and experiences and circumstances in your life are born of the pain that resides within you. You don't have to blame yourself anymore. You know, we all experience jealousy, rage, frustration, impatience, gluttony, greed. We've all had these feelings. We're all human beings. You know, we all go through them and it's it's learning to rise above them and be our best selves to find that pure and innocent heart within us that helps us move forward. But you do have to forgive yourself and you have to forgive others and recognize that none of us is infallible. There does feel like there's a lot of resentment here for you that you need to let go of and a lot of it you're holding against yourself. Again, this crown chakra, you know, this is the crown. It's got the Maltese cross there at the top. That's actually a twin flame symbol. It's, um, it's a very spiritual symbol. You can look it up. But here you're being reminded again of your own divinity and asked to ground that. You see all the red in this crown? You're being asked to ground your power and to recognize your own power. Trust in your power. Trust in spirit to lead you. And you've got to stop beating yourself up. Look at this, the Losers Club. You are not a loser. You know, I know you feel like you've not achieved everything you wanted to, but you've got to trust that you're exactly where you meant to be in life. Everything you've been through has value. It helps shape you to who you are. And I know you're not pleased with who you are, but it's because you're stuck in this very limiting belief that you're not good enough, that you're defined by the opinions of other people, that you're defined by your accomplishments. We're all just flesh and bone. You know, when you dump us all in a... Uh, a desert island with no clothes and no belongings and just ourselves we're just flesh and bone and we're not defined by what we have what we've done in life we're defined by who we are today now in the moment how we think how we feel and how we treat people and even that is something that we can constantly improve upon this is about acceptance of self acceptance of where you're at and also you've got to stop talking to yourself in this derogatory way it doesn't serve you you're so much better than that. And you deserve better than that. You've got to learn to be your own best friend. So we're going to take this over to the extended now. We're going to take a deeper look into what, in terms of what's happening in your love life with this person. We're going to look at how they're feeling, what they're thinking, what's blocking everything, and get some more guidance for you from spirit. So I'll see you over there if this resonated for you. If not, do hit the like button anyway, because it really does help my channel to grow. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate that. If you didn't like it, feel free to hit the down button too. That still helps my channel. All engagement is good. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please hit the subscribe button so that I can see you next time. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye. Hello, part three. Oh, I'm so excited to read for you. And I love this deck. This is a gift from my lovely student, Alexandra. It's so, so pretty. And we're asking today, what does spirit need and want you to know? What does spirit want you to know about your love life, about what's going on in love, your perception of love? Let's have a look. Let's see what's going down. Just a reminder, I'm not accepting. I'm, ugh, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Economy. I'm not accepting private readings at the moment. You can still book spirit release therapy with me. But if you do need support and guidance on this journey, um, do come and join my Facebook group. You can find us over on Facebook. There is a link. Pardon me, I keep burping as well. It's such bad manners. I do apologize. <laughs> Don't know where it's coming from. But um, I beg your pardon. You'll find a link down below to our Facebook group. There are so many lovely, happy souls in there that are just waiting to hold your hand through this journey and support you. If you're a twin flame or you're a soulmate or you're on the ascension journey, we are there for you. So come and join us. Right. We have got the Ace of Cups. We've got the Six of Swords. We've got the Three of Wands in reverse. 
and the four of oh that's the emperor that's the emperor the eight of pentacles in reverse the chariot in reverse the moon in reverse and the Hierophant. Oof, what a powerful lineup. I'm going to get some Oracle cards for you as well, Path 3. We've got Unconditional Love. Openness. From the Energy Oracle. Healer of the Ages. And Victory. And I'm going to get a postcard from Spirit as well. I'll read that out to you in a bit. I'll get a couple of these Lenormand cards. These were gift from White Rose Guidance. You can find a link to her channel down below. And we've got the Nine of Hearts. And the Jack of Wands or Clubs. We've got You Are My Other Half, Prisoner, and On My Way. Okay, let's do this. So, so let's have a look what's going on here. The thing that really stood out for me, and this, this has come up in pretty much every card, sorry, every pile today, is self-love. It's, it's come up in all of them and it's something we all need to do. But for you, I'm feeling that there's been a distinct lack of effort or work as far as um, as far as this has been concerned, and it's kept you stuck. It's kept you out of alignment with the divine, universal plan. And I'm really drawn to this Ace of Cups of this this woman holding all of these babies, and I feel like these are fragments of self. These are inner child wounds. And I feel like if you've chosen this pile, this is particularly important for you because the self-love deficit that exists within you is born of these multiple inner child wounds. You've had a really difficult childhood, a really difficult upbringing, and you're being asked to reintegrate those. Past life regression can be really helpful with this kind of healing, particularly if you're going way back into really early childhood where it's much harder to consciously remember. But I do feel very strongly, look at all these babies here. And again, in this card here, unconditional love, you've got the, these mums holding these babies. There's a need to reparent yourself, to be your own mother and to release the bitterness, the pain and the resentment that you hold for your own parents you know, for not giving you that, that, that unconditional love, for not being able to parent you in the way that you needed and wanted because they were just hurting too. You know, there's a real need to recognise that now as a divine being of love and light with access to this inner light, you've got to learn to give this to yourself now. You've got to release the bitterness and the pain of the past. You've got to stop blaming yourself as well because you weren't raised right. <laughs> You know, you weren't shown how to love. You weren't shown how to cope with your feelings. I'm hearing that you've really struggled with your mental health. You've really struggled to maintain safe relationships. But also, you've not been taking any responsibility for yourself in love. You've not been um, investing in yourself. You've not been recognizing that those wounds have got to be healed internally. That, you know, this is a damsel in distress energy. It's that, um, that feeling of wanting this knight in shining armor to just come along and fix it for you, to heal it for you. But the, the beautiful thing about this is that you are a natural born healer. And that through this experience of healing self, um, through this, this pain that you've, you've experienced in life, you're going to make a massive difference in the world to so many people. 
This is going to empower you to help and heal others. But you do have to start taking responsibility for healing yourself. Because I'm hearing that this relationship that you've been in, I feel like that you've turned your back on one another. There was some kind of opening, opening up for each of you. And it's resulted in, in you know what one or the other moving away it's not clear to me but I'm, I'm sensing this is your your um your person that's moved away um that you allowed yourself to be vulnerable despite the risk the fear of rejection and it didn't work out in your favor because you need to understand that your person is also in the energy of, of fearing rejection you're both prisoners of your own limiting beliefs you're both prisoners of your childhood pain and your wound, you're actually very similar is what I'm hearing, but there is a tremendous amount of pain here. There is a huge amount of pain here and you're, you're ignoring it. You're not taking responsibility for it is what I'm hearing. You have to start doing that work now and you have to focus on self-love because you, it's you that's blocking your own movement forward. We, we have got the moon in reverse as well and the, the three of wands in reverse, you know, that lack of fulfillment and of trying to control things you know, with this emperor energy, and we've got this little Napoleon here, you know, on his rocking horse, he's just moving backwards and forwards, he's not really going anywhere, you know, you can't control this journey, you know, you can only, your only power is to control yourself, this is a lesson that's being presented to you with the Hierophant here, you know, that you've got, you've got to, you've got to open up to that higher wisdom, you've got to open up to the potential for transformation, as I said, we've got the moon in reverse, we've got the chariot in reverse. You know, the chariot is about that divine forward motion being blocked and that six of swords, which is connected to this prisoner energy, that feeling of being trapped, but moving away from that. And look at all the debris in the water around them. There's this little bunny here, you know, and she, she's kind of resting in that boat, but she's moving away from all this chaos around her in the water. This is chaotic emotions, but look, she's closing her eyes to it. She's trying to sail through it without acknowledging it. And this is what you've done your whole life. You've just sailed away from these relationships, these situations that don't serve you without facing all of that dysfunction, you know, and you can run, you can keep running, you know, like this guy, <laughs> you can keep running, but you're, you're running away from yourself. You're running away from your own pain. Um, and it's time to face it now, to unblock um, this energy that's stopping you from having a healthy, loving, fulfilled relationship. And I do feel like the person you're involved with mirrors these energies exactly. And you get so angry with them. You know, you think they should be doing this, they shouldn't be doing that. If I'd said this or they hadn't said that, everything would be okay. If they could grow up, if they could take responsibility, if only they could heal and grow. Yeah, there's so much resentment. And I feel this isn't just for your counterpart, for your person. This has been a pattern in other relationships of, of blaming other people, of blaming your parents, of blaming your colleagues, of blaming your exes. You know, it's always everyone else's fault. They were mean, they were dark, they were toxic. They brought all of this drama to me. But you've, you've got to start looking at how your own wounds are coming up through all of those layers of emotion as well and impacting how you communicate and coexist with other people. Um, and I know you feel very sad and very disillusioned, but you mustn't blame yourself. You know, you are a beautiful person. You've got this love inside of you. I know you feel so ashamed of the rage and the anger and, you know, you see it as being not feminine enough is what I'm hearing. You see yourself as being someone that's like, too harsh, too masculine, but you do blame those people that are around you. You know, I'm hearing this person ruined that or that person ruined it. If they hadn't have done this, it would have been easier. If they hadn't reacted that way, it would have been okay. But you've got to recognize that everyone's dealing with their own pain and dysfunction and that you can only take responsibility for your own behaviors. Just because someone behaves a certain way doesn't mean you have to lower yourself to that same energy. Um, you know, it doesn't matter who who started that low vibe in ball rolling. You don't have to partake in that kind of stuff. And you do because that's what you've learned. That's what you've learned growing up. And that's what's been demonstrated to you in your, your relationships. But it takes two people to create that energy. Um, you've got to let go of control in relationships. 
You know, it does feel like you can be very authoritative and dominant. This is how it should be. I'm right, you're wrong. If only you did this, you know, there is a need to stay in control, to stay in your power. And you need certain conditions to be met for that, for that to happen is how it feels. So you're really being asked to release control and to recognize how you're a prisoner of your own thoughts and your own pain. There are a lot of limiting beliefs pertaining to self here. And as I said, I feel so strongly that your person is mirroring this energy too. They also have to repair themselves. But right now you guys are going round and round in circles and this depression, this pain you feel for not having the fulfillment that you feel you deserve in life, it's that that keeps you stuck. You've got to let go of the bitterness and the frustration that you don't have what you want and, and try and realign with faith and hope that you can have those things. When you change your mind, you change your world. Okay, it all begins with your thoughts. This person knows that you are the other half. There's strong magnetism there. But, you know, it, it feels like there is also a lot of repellent energy. You know, you bring out the worst in one another. You really mirror the worst in one another. You know, they're showing that you're projecting at one another is what's happening here. You know, you're projecting all of your pain at one another because you just want to be loved. You want to feel loved. And you can't accept one another because you can't accept yourselves. Um, these cards... This is number 11. I mean, it's one eleven lined up. It's a very divine number. And you see, it's holding on to this kind of... Um, some kind of whip. This is the Jack of Clubs or the, the Knight of Wands. It's a very passionate, very creative energy. But I'm feeling here as well that you feel like you've been punished by spirit. You know, you feel so hard done by. This is a real woe is me, kind of wallowing in self-pity. The universe has let me down. The universe isn't on my side. I feel like I've been jinxed or I've been cursed. Everyone's out to get me. Everything goes wrong for me. This is, you know, reminding you about the energy of pessimism and how much you punish yourself. And you don't need to do that. You know, all of the love you need that wish fulfillment, self-fulfillment, self-love, it's all within you. It's within you. You just have to reach out and take it. And as I said, you're a healer. You're going to heal with your big heart because you have got a big heart. You've got this natural healing ability, but you have to heal yourself first. You can't give to others what you don't have for yourself, but you can trust that you're going to be victorious in this. This is what's going to help you find fulfillment. You've got to trust that when you heal yourself, you're going to open up, open up a whole new world of abundance because your, your healing is going, to, is, going to, is going to help others. You know, it's going to bring people to, um, it's going to bring people to a place of healing for themselves or a place in which they can recognize they can heal themselves. Your experience, your resistance to this healing journey is what's going to make you a much stronger teacher. It's what's going to help you reach people that are in the same energy as you are now. You're going to be able to relate to their pain. You're going to be able to relate to their avoidance. And this card from Spirit, it says, going the extra mile to achieve your dreams and putting in some overtime will reap big rewards. Now is the time for you to act, to stir up some energy and put those plans into action. There are many windows of opportunity that open, but close quickly when you don't take that risk and go for it. Be confident that your hard work will pay off and you'll feel that satisfaction and fulfillment of reaching your desired outcome. It might turn out even better than you expected. Isn't that amazing? Remember how much work you're willing to put in. We will match it tenfold on our end. Everyone over here is rooting for you to win the game of life. Just do it. Loving you so, so much. And like I said, healer of the ages, victory. This is about opening up your power. This is where you're going to find your power. It's through that self-healing energy, through self-love, through repairing yourself, addressing those inner wounds and taking this seriously once and for all. Stop keeping yourself stuck in pain. It's not your fault that you carry this painful energy, but it is your job and responsibility to relieve it. And this person can't meet you halfway until you're able to do that. You've both got your back to one another, but look at that, they're still holding hands. You know, you've got to remember that you're always connected to this person's spirit. They've never really left you. But right now, neither of you are able to face the love, you know, because you've got to find that love within you first. Let's see what this person wants to say to you. 
you are worth fighting for and I'm hearing you guys fight yeah I think they've demonstrated that I hear that you fight <laughs> I'm entwined in the thought of finding you one day give me more time I'm not good enough for you yet my whole body burns at the thought of you I would just hurt you more right now I need to be alone and your picture brings me to tears so I really feel like there's been so much conflict between you. I really feel like, you know, the fact that you can never quite keep away from each other is the, the testament to the love that exists between you. But there is so much toxicity and conflict between you. Um, and, that the, you know, when I said you're worth fighting for, I really feel like you fight for each other. But you fight, you know, there is a lot of conflict here. Um, and despite how hard and troublesome that is, <coughs> I feel like this person sees that value as well, you know, and there is a tremendous amount of passion, you know, their body burns at the thought of you, I'm hearing as well that it burns with shame, you know, they recognise how much they've hurt you, but they're also so very angry with you, there's so much resentment and bitterness between you, and it feels like no one is really, neither one of you is able to find that kind of equanimity and equal ground, I'm entwined in the thought of finding you one day. So it does feel like you're in separation, as I said, one or both of you has moved away. But they know this isn't the end. But look, I would just hurt you more right now. I need to be alone. And I feel like this, this relationship became um, literally unmanageable. You know, it got to a point where it was intolerable and you had to separate. And they are saying, give me more time. I'm not good enough yet. You know, I, I need to heal me. But they're looking at you. They're looking at your pictures. They still feel very emotional when they reconnect with those memories of you and those images of you. Let's get some charms for you guys as well. Oh, right. We've got quite a few out for you. I only meant to get six. We've got writer, the moth. We've got piece of rose quartz, the stethoscope, a crown. This one's come up for every pile, living in perpetual sin keep going keep growing and sad songs writer I feel like this is a message for you I feel like you are a natural channel for spirit and that through writing through expressing yourself through writing it's not only going to be very cathartic and healing from you but it's actually going to help you draw down guidance from spirit so you need to kind of meditate, bring yourself to a place of stillness and balance, and then just let the words flow from you. I'm hearing that writing is going to help this transformation from dark to light. And this is a moth. Remember, moths are drawn to the light. This is about bringing yourself out of the darkness towards the light. We've got that rose quartz heart here as well. You know, recognizing your own divinity, recognizing that you are a being of love. I feel like you're too hard on yourself sometimes. And you and this person have really hurt each other. You've said really awful things together, which has actually deepened and rubbed salt in those, those wounds from childhood where you were told you weren't loving or worthy enough. Living in perpetual sin. And it can feel like this for you too, that you're stuck. You're constantly stuck with those sinful feelings, the jealousy, the bitterness, the greed. Um, you know, the anger, the rage, the frustration, the deceit, it just feels like you can't quite let go of it. But look at this, you know, out of that dark energy blooms this white rose, a symbol of purity and innocence, reminding you what you both are underneath of that. But you've got to learn to let go of that yourself. You've got to connect with your own crown, your own divinity, your own power. And we've got the stethoscope here. This is about really listening to your heart and listening to what's in their heart. You know, when you listen to what's in your heart, you're able to let go of all of that ego fear that stops you from hearing the truth. You know how like when one person says something and it really triggers the other because they've heard something different. They've not heard what that person is communicating from their heart. They've heard through their own pain, through their own sin. And so it triggers them. So you're being asked to listen from your heart you know, to really listen to one another. When you get an opportunity to communicate again, you've got to find a new way of listening. Keep going, keep growing. You've got to trust that your heart can bloom again, that you can bloom again, that joy is on the other side of this pain that you're experiencing. And this is sad songs. I, I feel like there are songs that you both listen to 
that remind you of one another, but I'm hearing that it reminds you of the pain and you don't want to stay in that energy. You know, I keep hearing, I don't want to hear sad songs anymore. <laughs> you know that one? I'm a really terrible singer. I'm sorry for subjecting you to that, but um, you need to, you, and, and this is, look, there's a little heart, not a heart shape, there's a blue tear here. I know there's a lot of truth and you relate in that, but it's time to start listening to more positive energy. Not keeping yourself stuck in those lower vibrations. So I really hope that was helpful, part three. I'm going to take this over to the extended read. I'm going to take a deeper look at how your person is thinking and feeling. Get some more guidance from spirit in terms of how you can move forward in this connection. If this resonated with you, hopefully you'll join me over there. If not, do hit the like button if you enjoyed this reading. It really helps my channel to grow. And hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more. If you tap the bell icon, that will mean you get notifications every time I upload another video. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Lots of love. Bye.